Welcome to Laura's World. I'm Laura and I pulled up a bag with some stuff to go over. Yay! I hope everybody's having a good time, having a good day, coming up on a weekend. Woohoo! Um, for my locale, it is daylight savings time or daylight savings time starts tomorrow, which would be Sunday the 6th of November. Although today I couldn't tell it was November because once again, the temperature was a little ridiculous. We got over 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Not November weather, but I mean, it, global warming is a thing, I'm just saying. I don't know, start with a little anecdote on the trials and tribulations of being fat. And um, also want a side note on that. Fat does not mean ugly. This is a misconception, um, a terrible one at that, and I, I am not offended if someone calls me fat. It's a word. It's a descriptive word. It's, it, it describes my state of being. I am a fat bitch. I own it. That doesn't offend me. Calling myself a bitch is something I laugh about because there are times where I can just condition it don't worry I can dish it but I just want to preface anything with saying and I'll probably say it a hundred more times in in future videos fatness has nothing to do with beauty someone can be fat and beautiful also can we normalize saying that someone is beautiful and just leave it at that don't say Oh, she's beautiful for a big girl. Oh, she's beautiful for a fat girl. No, you're beautiful. You're not like, and I believe that everyone has beauty, but the beauty comes from within. So if you're like a hoe bag on the inside and you treat other people like shit, well, then your outward appearance is just going to be ugly and marred. And I mean, that's on you. So, but Essentially, no one who watches my videos falls into that category anyway, so once again, here I'm rambling, but yeah, so do a little light skin skin care while I'm chatting here. That feels good on my face because I can almost feel my blood pressure coming up. Uh, some woman who's got like a bajillion followers made a video about a recent flight where she had what I lovingly refer to as the bitch seat on a plane. And that is in a row of three seats. You're the middle seat. That's the bitch seat. Whenever I fly somewhere with my husband, um, he generally takes the bitch seat. He takes one for the team because I am the bigger of the two of us. He can squeeze into most small and overhead compartments. Um, now he, he just kind of leans into me and I lean into the window and we make it happen. Like if I'm spilling onto his side, it's okay because he's going to spill right back into mine. Although he doesn't really spill. Anyway, so this one was, I uh, made an opinion video about two very obese people that she had to sit between. They were brother and sister, and immediately my thought was going to, these two did it on purpose. They selected an aisle and a window seat on purpose so that they didn't have to sit next to each other, and I guess they hoped that no one would sit between them, but someone did sit between them. And according to her testimony, she kept everything together and wasn't rude to them and politely asked if she could switch seats with the one in the aisle because she prefers the aisle seat. And then she said she doesn't understand people who fit, sit in the uh, window seat and thinks they're weird, but okay, well, I am weird, so I like the window seat. Not just because I like looking out the window, because literally I will just push myself up against it and call it a day. Put my headphones on and, you know. So she asked to switch seats with this guy and he was like, no. And she found out that, I don't know if I just said it, but they're siblings. Um, so right off the bat, I'm like, they did that on purpose. They knew what they were doing. And as someone of a larger stature, as a fat woman, uh, if I'm traveling with someone who's my size or around my size, I would say, hey, why don't we buy out the row, split the difference of the middle seat, that way we can spread and not inconvenience anyone because yeah, as much as, as a uh, powerful, beautiful woman as I feel and as strong as my voice can be, I am 
not ignorant to the fact that I take up space more than the average person. And even though the average size of a human being has been growing, I'm still much bigger than the average. I'm not in denial here. So when I travel with my husband, it's no biggie. We booked two seats together and that's the way it is. And if it's a longer flight, we either try to combine points or, you know, spend a little money that we shouldn't be or upgrade to first class or something, you know, th some situation like that for a longer flight, just because you know what, it's two seats next to each other and we are definitely not infringing on anyone else's space. Anyway, these, these siblings knew what they were doing. And honestly, if you don't agree with me, you're absolutely fine not to agree with me. You don't have to. I respect everyone's right to have an opinion, but I feel that if you know that's what you're doing, split the difference of the middle seat, buy it, throw your bag on it. Anyway, uh, so she basically went on to attack obese people on a whole instead of just focusing on these two very inconsiderate people. You don't have to be fat to be inconsiderate. There are plenty of entitled, inconsiderate, horrible normal, straight, or thin-sized people. Human beings on a whole can be horrible no matter what size they are. They can also be good no matter what size they are. It goes the, runs the gamut. People run the gamut. People are what makes the world go round. So she just basically goes off on a tear about obese people and travel and how if they can't fit in their seat, they shouldn't be flying or they should buy two seats, or they should X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, I can't really argue with her because if I can't put the armrest down, I can't fit in my allotted space. Not to say that the industry isn't shrinking the seats on purpose to, sh to, to shove in as many people as they possibly can. I mean, have you guys flown recently? Travel is, uh, oh God, it's a nightmare. It, you're shoved in like sardines, thin people, thin, to average sized people are complaining about the lack of space on a plane. So throw in a morbidly obese individual like myself and it's like, forget it, you're done. So she just went on, put obese people on blast and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, I mean, she's not incredibly wrong. Her delivery was a little questionable. Um, we don't have to insinuate that obese people are less than. I'm not subhuman, and last time I checked, I don't belong in the cargo hold, as one commenter suggested. But me and my big fat mouth, meant to be funny, I couldn't help myself and I threw a comment in there. I said, look, listen, I can't speak for anyone else, but I could speak for myself. And if I'm flying alone and I have not booked a first class seat, I'm going to say to the person who sits down next to me, listen, I'm fully aware of my situation. If you're not comfortable, please tell me. I will do everything I can to stay on my side. I like having the armrest down. I can fit into my seat. Uh, I don't need a seatbelt extender on every flight I've ever been on, to tell you the truth. But then I also have friends who work in the industry who say all the seatbelts are different sizes because they don't replace them if something goes wrong, they just cut them. You know, the standard seatbelt, even outstretched all the way, would fit me. It's when they get cut because they don't feel like replacing them, they just cut them down, then they get short. I travel with my own seatbelt extender just because, again, I'm not ignorant to my size. So anyway, I said in this comment, I was like, listen, I tell the person sitting next to me, I get it, let me know if I'm a problem, and I'm not traveling so much recently due to financial issues and mental health issues, really, but I did a lot of traveling. My husband and I are annual pass holders at Walt Disney World, and it's a two to three hour flight from where we are. And we would do weekends. We would do several weekends a year. We'd take a week, a year here and there. Like we would just go, we would fly to Disney World very frequently. So we had a system. Uh, but even if I went somewhere without my husband, like I flew recently 
to Washington State to visit one of my best friends. That was a whole debacle and because they messed me up so bad I actually got put on a first class the whole way. It worked out for me and I didn't have to excuse myself to anyone. But mm, one of the more recent flights I took with my husband from Florida back home they moved the seats around and the agent, the gate agent, instead of just putting us in the seats that we chose, said, I'll move you closer to the front of the plane. And I'm like, okay, so you're separating us, but what was I going to do? You know, um, I travel with a mobility scooter. I may have mentioned that before. I have killer arthritis in my back. Also the fibromyalgia and other pains and things. Listen, if I want to go somewhere, I want to enjoy myself. And if that means that I have to ride in my personally owned, personally purchased scooter, then so be it. I have no shame about it. I ignore the looks I get. I, I don't give a shit. I'm not there for anyone else but myself or my husband or my friends. And none of my friends judge me. Actually, my friends are pretty happy that I finally, a couple of years ago, uh, bit the bullet and bought the scooter. I got a script from my doctor, so I didn't have to pay taxes on it, and uh, I got a 50% rebate from my insurance because it was a medical necessity. I digress. Let me put on my stinky LMS. <clears throat> Skin, you're lucky I love you. <laughs> but, oh, these choky pearls. So yeah, I just said I make the person aware that I am fully aware of my situation and in all of the traveling that I've done, I have yet to find anyone who has a complaint. I actually sat next to another, oh yeah, I was saying I was seated in front of the plane by the gate agent and it, we were three big people right in a row and I'm like, did this person think it was funny? Did they do it on purpose? Like, So I just sat down and I looked at the guy like, I was in the aisle like this. And he's leaning into his wife, who's leaning into the window, and I said, I'm really sorry. And he was like, why are you sorry? We're all taking up space here. I said, if you need to lean into me, and he was like, same thing for me, and we got along just fine. Or, you know, I just, I let the people know next to me, just tell me. I don't have a problem folding up as small as I can or leaning into something. It's just, it's the way it is. I, I take my painkillers, I take my my happy pills and I just <clears throat> oh up to almost a thousand likes on that comment which ooh, ooh, I mean big big whoop an overwhelming majority of the responses to my comment were people saying good for you I wish more people were like that you must be an actual pleasure to travel with and all this other stuff and I'm like I didn't respond to any of them I was like Whatever. I did respond to one comment by saying Dehumanizing fat people isn't really helping to get anyone's point across it. That's actually kind of cruel, but an overwhelming majority of fat people are not ignorant to their size, is basically what I said. And uh, everything was fine, and this was like two weeks ago, and every once in a while I get dribs and drabs of responses or whatnot, because like I said, this person who posted this video is, uh, I'm not going to give their name or anything, but they're pretty big. Just, I mean, their audience is pretty big. I never heard of them before. And then... Two days ago, I get a notification. Like, I don't get notifications when my friends comment on all my videos, but I'll get a notification when some rando, who I like to refer as a no account account, meaning they have no videos, they have no picture, there's like no information. It's just a, a blank no account account. Re replied to my comment. And let me paraphrase, said, you know what would be even better? Just don't be obese in the first place. So many things went through my head that I wanted to say. So many things I just wanted to come out and be like, wow, you don't say. Why didn't I think of that in the first place? You're so smart. Thanks for figuring it out. Thanks for fixing it. Doesn't help that the person who made the video attacking obese people also said, um, most fat people are not fat because of medical problems. They're fat because of choices, which again, taking a dig, I have a lot of medical problems. The world hates fat people. I mean, that's basically the way it is. And the more time I spend between watching other videos or that cesspool known as TikTok, the more apparent it is that 
fat shaming and fat hate is the norm. It's somehow acceptable again, just when I thought we were making progress to just leave people alone and let them live their lives, being fat is a crime again, so whatever. Skin has been looking pretty good. It's It's been mostly, knock on wood, behaving fairly well. Scarring, but it's uh, every day just getting a little bit better, so at least there's that. For the fragrance du jour, I really don't feel like anything super heavy or perfumey today because, I mean, I'm wearing my headband, which signals to you that my head is feeling a little bit better. I can tolerate a headband, but I don't want to play games with smells, so we're just going to do this very light, very fresh Caudalie Fleur de Vin, which, again, flower of the vine. It's a fresh fragrance with grape water, so... Re. That is mighty pleasant. It's light, but it's enough to make a statement that something fresh is in the area, in the vicinity. So I got some samples along with some other skincare uh, things that I came into. We'll start with this little itty bitty sample of number seven laboratories, laboratories, line correct booster serum. I have heard of this before. I don't know how well it works, but as with everything, I am willing to give it a try. Then I also got this First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream Intense Hydration. I think I have this already, so this is going into the giveaway. Another thing I already have, which is also going into the giveaway, is this Clinique All About Eyes Reduces Circles and Puffs. There we are. Another thing I never heard of is this little container of Proteini Polypeptide Cream. Anyone ever use this before or ever hear of it? It's a cute little thing. Uh, made in... Oh. Belgium? And London? Okay. Cute. Then we have this OC, OSE, Ondaria Algae Body Oil. How exciting. I don't think I have... I don't know, I have a body oil somewhere, but I definitely don't have algae body oil, so that's going to be fun. And then something that tripped me up. This Belief the True Cream Aqua Bomb increased hydration level 70%. Dermatologically... Dermatologically? No. Derma, dermatologically tested, which we all know means nothing because a dermatologist can test something and say it's a piece of shit. But what trips me up about this is I looked at its Korean, right? It's manufactured by LG. Yes, that LG. Lucky Gold Star. The manufacturer of, it's a, it's a monopoly in, in Korea, in South Korea. They make everything from computers to toothpaste. So I've never actually received an LG product, and I'm going to go show this to my father-in-law because uh, he actually worked for LG. He was uh, some executive, he was some kind of executive uh, for LG North America, and he started, he was in logistics, I believe that's what he was in, uh, before he retired, and they basically, he, he uh, mm, 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 I, I don't really have anything to say about LG because read between the lines but I think that's hysterical that I have a sample of face cream or whatever from the company that my father-in-law used to work for so that'll be fun now for uh, some Elemis I love Elemis you know how much I love my Elemis they are slowly or rather gradually becoming my go-to my favorite skincare I got a matching set of this, what is this, Pro Collagen Marine Cream. So Pro Collagen, boo hiss, collagen. Although the way it's labeled, Pro Collagen Marine Cream Ultra Rich. Okay. 
if you need a refresher on my stance about collagen, collagen is not something that can be applied topically. The molecules are simply too large for human skin to absorb. However, it works as a good barrier and a humectant, meaning that it will draw in and hold moisture to the skin. That is the only sort of benefit to having collagen in any product. It needs an active with it, meaning a vitamin. So it says on the label, clinically proven with an asterisk and formulated to intensively nourish dry and dehydrated skin. Powerful anti-aging ingredients help to reduce the appearance of wrinkles, improve skin firmness, tone, and hydration in 14 days. The asterisk states, independent clinical trials of 2014. Directions apply every morning to cleansed dry skin. If contact with eyes occurs, rinse thoroughly. Okay, well, I'm not going to take the time to read the label at this point because I have other things to get to, but I have to assume, and as you know, assuming is terrible, you should never assume anything, but I have to uh, assume that there is an active involved because it says it's a hydrator, and that's exactly what collagen acts as, as a humectant. And because Elemis is so awesome and likes sending gifts, apparently I did get a gift. How cute is this? It's supposed to be a take on, I guess, a British phone booth, except they're red, but then they wouldn't have the red bow. Anyway. Um, if I remember correctly, I have some of this, but, ah, there's three things in here. So, the first is the Pro Collagen Energizing Marine Cleanser. Hey, this will go well with everything else I have. Then we have the, oh, a mini version of the Soothing Apricot Toner, which you know how much I love my breaking my apricot toner. And then the last thing another container of the dynamic resurfacing facial pads i still haven't busted open this one so i have two of these sorry guys i'm not giving these out but i am going to give out the mini soothing apricot ap how do you say it apricot or apricot i i guess it depends on how i'm doing in conversation but i will be adding this to the awesome giveaway pile now remember a few videos back, I had this absolutely delicious blue colored bottle uh, with an oblong gem lid or topper and it smelled awesome and I loved it, but there was no name on it and I couldn't read the label and I had a little locket on it. I said, if anybody knows what it is, let me know. And apparently nobody knew what it was. I found out it's actually part of the We Juicy Couture because I got this little sampler to fret thing to figure out. Hello. Yoo-hoo. There we are. Because I wanted to try the other ones in the collection, and I have the little blue one with the locket on it, but now I get to try the other three as well, so that's fun. Uh, spray, layer, create your own scent. So we have a Sweet Diva, which is fluffy and delicious. Uh, Sparkling Rebel, which is the one that I have, which is vibrant and energetic. Then the yellow one, I cannot read. The print is, like, too bright. Yeah, I can't. If you can read that, great. I can't. And then the purple one is Decadent Queen, which is luxurious and addictive. Addictive? I'm so dumb. It, the listing is right here. It's Blooming Babe, but it doesn't describe it. It's just called Blooming Babe, so flowers. So yeah, this was a nice little scent sampler. I like the blue one, so I hope I like the other ones too. I want to a few cosmetics. Uh, we'll start with this Hourglass lipstick. Look at this thing. It's like a like a weapon. Um, it's the refillable lipstick, and I don't even know what color this is. No. I have no hope and prayer. Oh. <laughs> it says it right there. The color is At Night. Uh, a red. Of course it's a red. That's how much product you get with this whole caboodle. Like, that's all you get. So, and how to apply. Like, what do you do? Hold it by the spike or do you hold it by, I don't know. Let me go ahead and put some on. I 
Not terrible for just winging it and looking in the camera. I love red. So good. This will go with the other one I have. It's a, a different shade of red. No me and my reds. Uh, the next thing I have, actually, I got this one from Target. I saw it in Target and I said, you know what? Everybody reviews this, says it's awesome. And it's a dupe for a lot of the other higher end products. It's the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation in a Powder. Now, shade matching under fluorescent lights in Target was kind of like a joke. Okay, so it has its own little sponge thing and a mirror inside. Cute. And then the product on top. Hmm. It has, it doesn't have like a chemical smell to it, it, it but it's not perfume either. Um, let's see if I just tap it. Okay. Can you see? All I did was lightly, oh, look at the lipstick on my finger. But I lightly tapped it and. Cool. You can, it just like blends right in. I guess I did a pretty decent job at shade matching myself under fluorescent lights and Target. So I'm looking forward to trying that with a brush. Um, because this was legit like $11. And then I talk about my $11 L'Oreal drugstore and then I move on to Jaclyn. <laughs> there was a sale. Jaclyn Fair Light Skin Perfecting Blurring Tint. So it's not quite a foundation. It's almost like a, uh, I, I don't know, what would you compare this to? Almost like a CC cream? Skin blurring tint. Well, I wanted to try, it's like a new, new type of product that's out. All the rage right now is the skin blurring stuff. Some of it's powder, some of it's liquid. Yeah, so this is, it comes in a pump. Let's see if I can get a little bit out. I don't wanna like, there we go, got a little bit out. I don't know, am I blurred? Again, not a shabby match. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely try that. And then the last cosmetic thing out of the bag that I packed for this video, because I can't help myself, I got fingerprints all over it. It's the Ulta and Disney collab, Magic Kingdom. And it comes with the Magic Kingdom eyeshadow palette, 12 shades in matte and shimmer finishes, and the Kiss Goodnight lip gloss in toasted pink shimmer. And that's what you get. That's what comes with it. Right there, Disney Ulta Beauty. I can see how they can call that a toasted pink shimmer. That's actually kind of cute. And then the palette. Again, what's with all this stuff that looks like weaponry? <laughs> it, uh, does this have a mirror? It does. It has a small mirror. And it has a, a kind of neutral-ish with two blues. That's kind of interesting. The shade names are Dumbo, which is uh, like a cloud light blue. Splash Mountain Tan, Liberty Bell, which is a shimmery gold, and we have Le Fou's Brew, which is a darker brown, Madame Leota, if you don't know, that's from Haunted Mansion, and that's a sparkly blue, Mad Tea Party, it's a pinkish tan, light tan, Cinderella's Castle is a champagne shimmer, almost, Enchantment is a little darker than Mad Tea Party, and Fantasy is a purple-ish, mauve-ish shimmer. Then Main Street is like flesh tone, like my flesh tone. Pixie Dust is more of a closer to a tannish champagne shimmer. And then gray stuff is not gray. Gray stuff should be gray, and it's kind of not as gray as I would expect it to be. So, I mean... It's it's a collab with with Ulta. We're not expecting miracles here, but I thought it was cute. So it's been a few minutes with this lipstick kind of settling into my lips, and it actually it's pretty pretty rich, pretty creamy. It's non drying. It's not sticky either. It's it's comfortable. It's light. I don't really feel like I'm wearing anything. Like you know, sometimes you put something on and you know you're wearing it. 
I don't even know I'm wearing it, and I took absentmindedly a few sips of my almond milk over here, and very, very little trace of leaving on the rim of the glass. So, okay, hourglass, I see you. A little, uh, I was on sale. Of course it was on sale. Uh, I don't think I would pay full price for that small amount of product. However, a little bit seems to go a long way, and it seems to stay put without being sticky and without being gross. So that's great. So this was a little bit of a longer one, kind of getting back into my usual, typical nonsense. Well, I understand I was blathering a little in the beginning, but I just felt the need to get that out. You know, you know who I am. Um, Melanie had mentioned that she was looking forward to getting some longer videos again, so I am very happy to oblige. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all we're gonna do for today. I got some exciting things going on tomorrow. Maisie, my baby girl, is going to the groomers. So we got that to look forward to, get those claws of her taken care of and that stinky paw thing that she has going on. I love her, but sometimes. So yeah, that'll do it. Be sure to get all that H2O going, slather on the SPF, and have the day that you deserve, which I hope is fabulous. Bye!